So in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at predicting electrolysis reactions and looking at various questions where you're putting this all into practice. So the first question asks us, um, consider the electrolysis of a neutral nickel chloride aqueous solution uh, using inert platinum electrodes. Predict the electrode reactions. Give the electrode half equations and the overall cell reaction. So Okay, so what we have going on here, now we've got an electrolysis reaction taking place. So we've got our electrodes, which I'll just draw out. Um, we've got our electrolyte solution. And then we've got our external circuit, which is um, power supply this time. So we've got some kind of DC power supply here and it's providing the electrons. Now, the solution, the electrolyte here is, uh, contains nickel chloride. So nickel has a plus two charge, so it's nickel two plus and chloride minus. So altogether that becomes um, nickel chloride, like this. But it's important to know in the electrolyte, which is the solution that contains the ions, um, it's important to know what kind of ions are present because that will determine the reaction. So nickel, you've got nickel, you've got chloride. We've also got, because this is a solution, we've also got water being present there. And that might interfere with our overall reaction. Um, well, not interfere, that might just occur at one of these electrodes. So in this case, we have to have a look at, because the uh, electrodes, are not going to be involved in the reaction. They're just going to be there to transfer electrons, but they're inert. So we don't have to actually worry about any side reaction that may happen with electrodes, which is a good thing because it might get a little bit complicated. Um, so we have to give the electrode half, half reactions and the overall cell reaction. So this is our first mark, and this is probably our second mark. Important to read the question properly. Okay, anyway, so um, we have to determine, this is a DC power supply. So out of one side of the power supply, you have your electrons um, that are being emitted from that side. That will always be the negative side of your battery. And towards the positive side of your battery, we've got electrons being taken up. So I'm just showing, these arrows are just showing the electron transfer. Now, uh, what's happening? So it doesn't really matter in this case, you know, um, how the DC power supply is connected. Um, I'm just going to assume that electrons are flowing into this side of the electrode. So this is a platinum electrode. It's going to, there's going to be electrons being stored on the actual metal. Now, over here on this side, you will have electrons being removed or taken away. Um, I always think of it as the positive terminal of your battery is like a vacuum cleaner. It sucks up electrons. Um, whereas the negative side uh, moves electrons into that particular electrode. Okay, so now what we really need to know are the chemicals that we're investigating. So we've got them here. It's the ions that will be either grabbing electrons or having them removed. Um, so we've got chloride, which is up here. Now, as you can see, chloride's on the side where electrons are not going to be, uh, they're not going to be accepted. They're just going to, chloride is only capable in its ion form. It's only capable of turning back into electrons, so letting go of electrons and um, producing chlorine gas. That's the only thing that chloride ions can actually do. Uh, then we've got nickel. Now nickel is found right over here. Uh, we also have, as I mentioned, we have water interacting. So water is present there. And there's another water equation that is actually this one over here. Now, just, a distinct, um, just to distinguish between the two water equations, 
this water equation up here is the water equation that will be letting go of electrons. Okay, so you can see that water breaks down into four electrons, four hydrogen ions, and oxygen. Whereas this reaction going forward, uh, this water gains electrons and forms hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. So there is a difference between the two water equations. One is letting electrons go. The other one is actually absorbing them. So in terms of predicting the reaction, so students often find this quite confusing. Which one do we pick? So what you have to think about is at this, at this particular electrode, which is where the electrons are actually moving towards. So since the electrons are being deposited right over here, um, it's called the cathode because it's the cathode because electrons are going to be gained. They have to be gained because those electrons that are storing on this electrode here have to be removed. So there has to be something that comes up, like an ion, that comes up to this cathode here on this side. So it, the cathode polarity is going to be negative and grabs the electrons off the surface of the metal. So in terms of deciding which chemical that's going to be, well, we can straight away eliminate chloride ions and this water equation here because neither of those two chemicals are actually capable of gaining electrons. They can only go backwards. They can only lose electrons. So then we go to the, side, to the bottom there of our electrochemical series and we can see that we have two reactions that we could choose. Potentially choose nickel, ion as gaining electrons turning into nickel solid, or we can choose this water equation here that gains two electrons and forms hydrogen ions and OH. Now in terms of its oxidizing strength, which is the strength of um, how much a chemical is going to accept electrons, nickel is actually a more powerful oxidant. It's a more powerful oxidant because it tends to gain electrons to form nickel solid. Um, so in ter if, these are, if these two chemicals are competing for who's going to um, grab electrons of the cathode, it will be the um, stronger oxidant, which in this case is actually nickel. So the half equation that takes place at the cathode is that the nickel ions in the solution are going to grab two electrons from the cathode, from, the, from this metal here, okay, and it's going to form nickel solid. Now that nickel solid, usually what happens with it is it starts being deposited on the actual electrode. Uh, I just got rid of my electrode. Fantastic. I'll redraw it in. Uh, and so, yeah, so we've got a, that's a bigger electrode, but uh, it's going to, the nickel is going to get stored on, on the actual electrode here. So this, this here is going to be nickel being stored. Okay, so and some of it might pile on the bottom of your um, beaker there, the one that doesn't stick to the actual um, electrode. So that's the cathode equation. Now, the equation at the anode. Uh, quite often, students get confused which, with 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 uh, what electrodes the anode, what, which one's the cathode. So the anode is always the one that. Um, undergoes oxidation, so in other words, it loses electrons. And you can see that if from here, because electrons are getting pulled by the positive terminal of your battery, they're actually going to be lost from, from this, uh, yeah, you're going to get a loss of electrons. So in terms of the reaction that takes place at this location here, electrons are getting pulled towards the positive terminal of the battery. So you have uh, this one or this one to choose from. Now, um, because water is better at, sorry, um, yeah, water liquid is better at undergoing 
oxidation because it's lower on the electrochemical series. So remember, if you look at the very bottom of your electrochemical series, if you look at lithium, lithium is one of the best chemicals, best metals at letting electrons go. So you can see this back and forth arrow, lithium actually um, loves to let go of electrons. We know that about lithium. It's found in group one of the periodic table. It, it tends to be quite reactive and the reason why is because it needs to get a, rid of those electrons just to stabilize. So we know that lithium is the best at losing electrons. As we go down the, peri the electrochemical series, um, chemicals get better at re releasing electrons or letting them go or in other words the, the chemical term for that is oxidizing. So water is better at undergoing oxidation than chloride ions are. So it takes less energy to, for water to undergo oxidation and therefore it is actually the reaction that occurs at the anode. So at the anode you're going to have water breaking down into oxygen gas, four hydrogen ions, and four electrons. So this will be the reaction that occurs at the anode. Okay, so um, now what will happen at the, the graphite won't actually change, the, sorry, the platinum won't actually change, but you will have bubbling occurring around here because of the oxygen gas forming. And you also have um, a decrease in pH. And this is due to the uh, hydrogen ions that are being um, formed. So you've got um, hydronium ions, so it becomes more acidic on this side of the half cell. Okay, so in terms of the overall cell reaction, I can write it down here once I make some space. It's a bit ambitious with space. Oh, here we go. Computer is not going to cooperate. Okay, so the overall reaction um, that takes place, and it's really important that you are confident with writing these out. So overall reaction. So we just fuse those two together. We know what's at the cathode. At the cathode we have nickel 2 plus plus 2 electrons forming nickel solid. And sometimes it's appropriate to get the EMF values, so we may as well put them down, even though the question didn't really state that. So the EMF of nickel is this here. It's uh, negative 0.25 volts. Um, and then the we know that the water equation is also taking place. And that's the at the anode. So water is breaking down into I'm a bit slack with states. Uh, so so water liquid is breaking down into oxygen gas plus four hydrogen ions plus four electrons again states. Okay, so the voltage for that happens to be for water because you're flipping it around the other way. It is negative 1.23 volts. Okay, so the reason this is going to be negative in the end is because you do need to provide a um, power supply, external power supply for these non-spontaneous reactions to take place. These won't happen naturally. That's why you need a battery to get it done because it's actually not a spontaneous equation. It's a non-spontaneous one. So you're going to need energy investment. Okay, anyway, so now putting these together, we're going to um, have to multiply this reaction by a factor of two because we need to make sure that the electron balance is the same. The EMF does not get influenced by that too there. So the overall reaction is going to be nickel, two nickel ions um, plus two waters. The electrons here, there's going to be four of them and those four electrons there will cancel 
um, from our overall reaction. We don't need it in our overall reaction, so we've got then oxygen gas plus nickel solid plus four hydrogen ions. And so that's going to be our overall reaction for electrolysis. Uh, another problem that I can see that's going to occur here, and just to um, just to make you more aware of it, I suppose we need to look sometimes at the products that are being formed. So what's going to occur is that you're going to make a whole stack of hydronium ions, a H plus, and here we just made nickel, nickel solid, and so what will take place is that you can see. Hydrogen ions are here, and this is all happening in the solution. So eventually those hydrogen ions, they're going to be attracted to the negative electrode because that's where electrons are, so they're going to naturally just through electrostatic attraction be attracted towards the negative um, cathode in this case. You can see that hydrogen ions and nickel have, um, they can actually react um, just through spontaneous redox reaction. So you may have a side reaction um, where you have a galvanic situation occurring. So that may be a side reaction that takes place. Um, and it's quite important to look at you know, what kind of reactions could take place because that's potentially a question that they might ask you in an exam. Um, to finally calculate the EMF um, or volts for this question here, you just have to take um, this, uh, so you take the voltage at the um, cathode, so minus 0.25, and then go plus the one at the anode, okay, so we go plus negative 1.23, and that will be equal to um, hang on. I'm trying to calculate this on the calculator, but I can do this in my head. I just can't think today. So 1.48 volts. So we're going to at least have to have a voltage, the bare minimum voltage that we must have for this electrolysis reaction to take place is 1.48 volts. You often want to have a bit more so that you can make sure that there's no um, potential different changes and it doesn't influence your reactions or anything. So that is the voltage um, that you want to run it at. So hope that helped. We'll go through question two in the next tutorial.